What family secret was finally spilled in your family? Found out my uncle is actually my brother. My mom had him when she was so young that my grandparents raised him. My great great grandfather was exiled and banned from Missouri for being a sheep thief. When my mother fell ill and I took over her finances I found thousands of pounds of gambling debt on her credit cards. Then I found adoption papers for a child she'd had before me that she'd never mentioned. Then another family member told me my dad didn't die in a car crash but committed suicide in prison. My grandma didn't drive. I thought she couldn't. But it was just never discussed. One day when I was maybe 7-8, I'd been trying to get someone, anyone to drive me to the store for candy. We were visiting my aunt and uncle. Grandma lived with them. They had bitto honey at the local store, which I could no longer get at home. But no one would take me to the store. Finally I said I'd just ask grandma. And my cousin chimes in with. Grandma can't drive. Oh you bet your sweet ass I can drive. They just don't let me. Grandma had overheard and she was in high dudgeon. But that's all that was said about it. And my aunt finally took me to the store. So I forgot about it. Years later. When I'd just gotten my license. I asked my mom what was up with grandma not driving. She explained that during prohibition grandma bootlegged alcohol for moonshiners. She was very successful at it. She was so successful at it that when the moonshiners were finally busted. Even though the revenue was never caught my grandma. Her license was suspended by the state to never be reissued. Later in life she was told she could petition for it back but it came with an admission of guilt or some such. She told them to go to hell. My sister cheated on her husband throughout her entire marriage to the point that all three of her kids have different biological fathers. After my grandfather passed, we found out he had fathered a child when he was posted in Italy during World War II. He never knew. His mother intercepted any letters from the Italian girl. He came home, met and married my grandmother and had four children. I forget who in the family found out and how. It's crazy to think we have a whole Italian family out there. Edit. Went to sleep and woke up to crazy notifications. Thanks for the awards. To clarify I'm in the UK. Not that it's relevant to the story. My oldest aunt is 77 so this kid would be at least 79 by now I would think. We've considered doing the DNA testing but some family members aren't comfortable with how those companies could use the information. It's a really sad story. But if his mother hadn't intercepted the letters. I wouldn't exist. It's a weird place to be in emotionally. I started having problems with my teeth. Spontaneous abscess that resulted in multiple root canals. My dentist did some looking into what the cause might be and found some really odd abnormalities with my incisors roots and nerves, the teeth that had been afflicting me. So he sent out requests for help to a couple of professors he knew in the field. When my next appointment came up he was really quiet for a bit before verbally stumbling about. It turns out that what was happening with my teeth was a classic sign of inbreeding and he was super uncomfortable giving me the news. Brought it up to my mom and she just was like, oh well yeah, didn't you know? WTF. Of course I didn't know. Turns out that not very far back in the family tree, several of my relatives decided that it was a good idea to get married to one another doubt and no one bothered to mention it, ever. The small town where I live is 85% my relatives. No joke. I hadn't even met all of them. That's how many there are. Edited for clarification. I had made a big point of going far away from my hometown to meet my husband. Married 12 years this June. Because I was afraid of having children with someone that might be my cousin. Only to find out 5 years after we had been married that I was in fact a product of inbreeding. My husband and I are not related at all. Edit. I did not expect this to blow up. I honestly thought that it would just get lost. Thank you for the awards. I will try to answer some questions here. My teeth look normal. Nothing special about them. No crowding. Nicely spaced. Pretty normal teeth. I didn't take what the dentist said really all that seriously and figured that what the prof said was maybe just a theory rather than fact. Maybe just correlation rather than causation. Then I told my mom. All of my lower incisors have split roots with split nerves. The nerves are in a V shape instead of just straight. There are cavities in my chin around the nerves. So if I get a slight bump on the chin the inflammation can cause an infection. 
I pretty much end up looking like a sexy female version of Brian Mulroney. I found out about this after I had been married for around 5 years. I am from Ontario, Canada. I won't say where because you might be my cousin. Both my mother's side and my father's side came from smaller towns where the population was predominantly family. That is, the families had lived there since the town had been settled. So there is a good chance that there had been some inter-cousin shenanigans on both sides. Though no names from my mother's side showed up in my father's family tree. So far 23 and says that I have a little over 1,500 relatives scattered across Canada and the USA and only 17 in the UK. Mostly my father's side is in the USA, which surprised me, while my mother's side is mostly in Canada. But that's only people that have taken the test. There still could be more. My aunt wasn't my grandfather's child. He met my granny when my aunt was a very sick infant. She had polio and wasn't expected to survive. My granddad married my granny so she could get on his insurance and move to an area that had proper medical support. My aunt was the first infant to survive open heart surgery at Yale New Haven Hospital. And although she had to be in leg braces most of her childhood, she had a great, although not long enough, life. My granddad loved her like she was his own. And I never knew until she went to her bio dad's funeral when I was a teenager. Editing to say, thank you to everyone who's shared their family stories or left a comment. I've spent the whole evening reminiscing and sharing stories I haven't really told in a long time. And that really means a lot. Thank you so much to everyone who's given an award or left an upvote. I haven't been able to comment on everyone's stories but I've read them all and deeply appreciate them. This has been the highlight of my week. My grandmother recently died. She was famous in our town for her amazing cooking catering. In particular her turkey dinners. Notably, her gravy was absolutely amazing. So delicious. She had a heart attack several years ago and her near death experience convinced her to share some of her secret recipes with me. All except for her gravy recipe. When she died this spring. I was going through her pantry and found an entire bucket of KFC gravy mix. She was literally using KFC gravy mix as a base to make her incredible gravy. Huge scandal. Mayo. Edit. Used infamous when I meant famous. After my mom died I found out the real story behind my parents marriage. She came to my father's country to visit some of her relatives. Met my father and after just one week she asked him to marry her so she could stay in the country. My father accepted because he had no one else and his parents were pressing him to get married already. But the highlight of the story is that over some time, the two of them fell in love with each other. Their love only grew over the time and they were really happy together. My mother spent her last days very ill, and she would accept only my father by her bedside. He swears to this day that she was an angel sent from God to take care of him. I'm shocked that they got married just like that. Out of the blue and ended up loving each other so 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 deeply. I can only hope to have as good and loving marriage as they had. Edit. I had no idea my parents little secret would touch so many people. Thank you all. It means a lot. That my grandfather was an atomic soldier. Instead of sending him to fight in the Korean war. They sent him to Nevada, where, after having him turn away from the initial flash, he witnessed the mushroom cloud. After that was over, he was ordered to march to the detonation point, where he was unwittingly exposed to high amounts of radiation. Luckily for my family, my grandpa is now in his 90s, even after a few cancer scares, and the rest of us, my mom, aunt, cousins, sister, and I, are cancer free and fairly healthy. But this is medical information that we really should have known earlier. My dad fathered a child in high school. His side of the family knew. And my mom. We found out years after he died that we have a half sister. Relative did not just fall off a bridge with her baby. She jumped. It seems obvious in hindsight but they reported it differently both in the news and to younger family members. Edit while this blew up. I just want to say it's been weirdly really nice reading all of the comments here. I knew this was common in a hush hush way but never the stories of other real people like this. After I was molested by my uncle, it came out he had done this to another one of my sisters and my family covered it up. Particularly my mother. Now I know why my sister didn't like how close my uncle got to me when I was younger. Due to 23 and me, 
My dad learned that his recently deceased father was not his biological father. It wasn't a situation related to my grandma cheating either. It was a sperm donation. So, they knew this was the case his entire life. Pretty crazy they never told him. His parents did not pass until he was 65 years old. Talk about a curveball. When my sister was diagnosed with cancer and her survival chances were low, it inevitably came out that she wasn't my sister. Parents must have felt we should all know the truth just in case. She survived her treatment and will always be my sister. Edit. Whoa. Thanks for the kind words everyone. Less than three. My mother had a child when she was a teenager and she had given him up for adoption to a family. After this, she went to college, got her degree, married my father and gave birth to my four siblings and myself. 30 years after giving her child up for adoption, I remember her getting a phone call and immediately locking herself in her room. I was about 12 at the time. I remember feeling scared because I could hear my mom crying. But she didn't want to see anybody or talk about why she was crying. On an evening later that week, my parents sat each of us kids down and told us about my mom's past and explained that my half-brother had reached out to my mom wanting to meet her and get to know her. My dad had known ever since he and mom were dating in college. And I believe my oldest sister had been told previous to this point. But the rest of my siblings and myself and all of the in-laws on my dad's side, my grandma, aunts, and uncles etc. didn't know about this part of her past. We are fairly religious conservative. So it was really shocking at first. My mom then flew out to the state where my half-brother lived with her sisters and met him. Both my mom and my half-brother were both very nervous about the whole thing. But by the end of their trip meeting each other, they got to rebuild a relationship. After a bit of time, we, my siblings and I, got to meet him too. Fast forwarding to now. He's since moved to our same state and we see him much more frequently. He's in all of our family pictures. We see him occasionally for holidays and birthdays. And we all see him as part of our family. We're a very close-knit and extroverted family, while he is much shyer, so at times he's can be a bit more distant than we would like, but we give him his space. I know my mom stays in close touch with him, and we love it when he's able to make it for family dinners and whatnot. Back then, I was the youngest and, up till then, the only boy in my family, so I loved learning that I had an older brother. Now that I'm an adult, I sometimes get his old clothes because we're roughly the same size. He's got good taste too so I really lucked out ha ha. I love that this family secret was spilled in that we were able to welcome my brother into our family and have him in our lives. We went to my grandmother's for Christmas dinner like we did every year and my uncle drank too much. And kind of hinted that he had an affair with my mother. A couple of months and two DNA tests later we found out my sister is actually his daughter. My dad never spoke to his brother again. And of course. My parents got divorced, and I needed a lot of therapy, and chocolate. Gosh we are trash. My mom and older brother are not biologically related to me. My bio mom died sometime after I was born, leaving me, my sister, and my dad behind. My brother was the one that told me. My parents never told me because they wanted to protect me from the truth. But my brother thought that was a BS reason for me to not know. I don't know if my parents know that I know the truth, but I don't want to bring it up either. Edit. To address some questions. My mom immigrated here along with my older brother when he was a kid. My dad also immigrated here and my sister and I were born after he came. I don't know much about our family history beyond that. My brother revealed this info around when I was 18. He isn't the type to lie about something like this. He also said my sister is apparently aware of the truth because she has a memory of my bio mom being in physical contact with her. I don't think too differently about my family because of this. My mom is still my mom. Grandpa was a serious Nazi German war criminal. We found out after my grandfather died that none of his seven children with my grandmother were his. And that they all likely had different fathers. My cousin is actually my sister. Apparently my mom got pregnant really young and her much older sister adopted my sister and raised her as her own. It was actually an amazing moment when we found out. My cousin, sister, and the sister I was raised with and I are really really close. Just happened last year. We're all old now. 
I'm 50 and my cousin sister is 58, so it's just a really neat thing that makes us all happy. My great aunt had a secret kid that she adopted out before she got married. Told everybody a couple years ago while she was working on finding him. He's a great part of the family now. Edit, not to be that guy. But I've never had a comment blow up so much so I'm going to be that guy. I'm happy my little family secret has reverberated with so many people. And even if I haven't directly replied I've read every story. Treat your newly found family right when you find them. They're usually awesome. Found out my grandma had a baby as a teenager and was forced to give him up for adoption by my great grandparents. 40 years later he found us. My uncles are infamous criminals who killed multiple people. I thought they bred dogs. Edit. Thanks for the awards. The only good thing that ever came from this. When I was 28, I found out that my dad was not my biological father. The news came out via the following. My dad was battling depression and was suicidal. So I had just flown home to try to take care of him and rescue him from my mom's wrath. My mom had verbally and emotionally abused him during their entire relationship. He loved her so much. And he tolerated it. Well. During a solemn walk w my dad. As I tried to help him out. He confided that he's not my biological dad. And he went on to tell me he knew this all along but my mom lied to him and tried to convince him that he was my biological father. He knew he wasn't. But he wanted to play the role. When I was 10 years old. My mom finally confessed this to him. And he was worried that upon hearing the news, officially, he'd somehow let this affect his relationship with me. So, when I was 28 years old, during this walk w my dad, as he pours out this story to me, he frames it by telling me that his two most proud items in his life are, 1, how I turned out his raising me, 2, that he had completely forgot about the news my mom told him earlier in that day, when I was 10 about him not being my biological father, and that it was only upon tucking me in at night, when I was 10, that it briefly crossed his mind. It was at that point that he knew nothing would ever come between us and our father-son relationship would be as awesome as ever. He also confided that my mom did hard drugs while pregnant with me, and this broke his heart to witness firsthand. They were very poor. My dad grew up in a foster home without parents. My mom grew up w6 siblings and old equipped parents. She dropped out of 9th grade, whereas all of her other siblings dropped out earlier. Many of them are barely literate. I'm now mid 30s. And tragically, my dad committed suicide mid March 2020. Right as covid was hitting. I was out of the country at the time but immediately flew 30 hours, 30 min layover, and made it in time for his funeral. I do everything in his honor. Update. Whoa. This thread blew up overnight. My most popular comment by two orders of magnitude. And it's about my sorrow. I'm just glad so many of you read about how amazing my dad was. And I truly appreciate the outpour of kind. Thoughtful words and wishes. It warms my heart. I could go on and on with countless examples about how amazing he was. After graduating from the orphanage at age 18. He moved up to Atlanta by himself and taught himself woodworking. He was incredible and would build fine furniture pieces for renowned interior decorators. And his items would be in magazines all the time. He was a starving artist. We always struggled to get by. Yet, I felt like a spoiled kid on my street. As I had life easier than everyone else. The other kids on my street lived in trailer homes and had very chaotic households. And it was clear that both of my parents loved me immensely and I felt very well provided for and supported. I was very lucky to have him in my life. I still think about him daily, and I'm trying to improve emotionally. I appreciate everyone sharing your own similar stories. And it provides a sense of camaraderie. Hearing the shared pain and empathy, and seeing that this resonated with so many people. It motivates me to finally write a short stories book that would include snippets from my relationship with him. For those interested in reading more about him, EXERPT from my eulogy to him, which I wrote when flying to his funeral, to his hard work. For my entire upbringing, he worked every single day in his shop. For long hours or didn't even take a day off for Christmas or his birthday. As a kid, I witnessed his work ethic and it forever left an impression on me. Importantly, he didn't appear as if he was working for someone else, he was working for himself. 
He found what he loved saw woodworking saw and he completely immersed himself into and dedicated his life to making perfectly crafted items because he wanted to. He had passion, pursuit of perfection, and an unlimited tank of dedication to fuel it. He didn't just make items. He didn't just work. He made masterpieces. When I was 18 and left home to go to college, I aspired to be like my dad. He set the example. I was trying to make something of myself and to really give it my all just like he did. His work ethic was ingrained in me. I would get 4-5 hours of sleep many nights every week. For years. It was hard. But I always thought about how much harder my dad worked. I would recall memories of him working in his shop late at night. I'd hear the saws spinning. The compressor running. Memories of huge sawdust piles under his table saw. He did so much to provide for our family. He always provided. I remember being a kid. Hanging out with him in his shop. Admiring his dedication to the craft and strive for perfection. So, when I was 18, starting college, I was trying to make him proud. And I was also trying to do everything I could so that I'd have the opportunity to do anything I want in this world. Not just for myself, but on behalf of my dad. A part of me felt that whatever opportunity I gained, whatever success I had, it was in hopes that he too would somehow benefit, that he could vicariously get what he deserved. He deserved the world. And I've just been trying to channel his hard work and do my part. Anything I've accomplished, it's because of my dad. 3. His creative problem solving abilities. Not only did my dad work relentlessly hard, but he masterfully found creative solutions to everything. He truly dedicated his life to solving problems and designing furniture for others. There is no physical item he could not figure out. His ability to do so was way beyond anything I've ever witnessed. None of my colleagues at MIT, Harvard, Brown, or whatever fancy place I've worked at could remotely come close to having my dad's unique ability to creatively make things work. Whatever the problem, my dad could find a solution. When he was 12, he was excited once he learned that you could repair some radios just by replacing the diodes. When I was a kid, he made me an incredible tree house with its own electricity line. When I was a teenager, there was a large ice storm in Georgia that caused half a million homes to lose power for up to a week. Our house included. My dad had an old portable black and white TV. He grabbed his car battery and rigged it up so that we could watch TV for days. Despite not having power, his vehicles over the years had so many contraptions and workarounds. They were often like modern day Flintstones cars. This was how he did things his entire life. 5. His strength and character. His perseverance was unmatched. He handled so much adversity over the years. Especially the past 10 years when he was in so much pain. He was the strongest person I've ever met. Hands down. In recent years. He experienced and recovered from Stevens Johnson syndrome. A rare. Horrific. Deadly skin disorder that covers the entire body. He was resilient beyond belief. And he endured so many personal obstacles that were thrown his way. His strength wasn't just in his ability to endure. But in his bravery. I have many stories from my childhood where he stepped us to save the day in crises. He was fearless. Not only was he courageous in his character. But he was also physically strong as an ox. It was uncanny. In his 60s. He could often lift more than I could in my 30s. Despite my being really into weightlifting. But I'll spare you the fun. Humbling details. 6. Honorability and gentleness. Once I became an adult. He was strong enough to admit to me tough moments in his life. He was willing to confide in me painful times that he endured. He was willing to call on me for help. And to tell me when he felt he wasn't strong enough. We all feel this way at times. He was vulnerable to cry. He showed me that one's willingness to show vulnerability is in fact a product of strength and bravery. 11. Closing. As I close, I want to mention one of my favorite artists, Alanis Morissette, who has a stanza that challenges us by asking, how about remembering your divinity? How about unabashedly bawling your eyes out? How about not equating death with stopping? To this effect, I know that my dad will continue to inspire me and influence me for the rest of my life. Without question, I am who I am because of him. I've always aspired to uphold the principles and he stood for. And I hope that others see in me his virtues and pieces of his personality. I want to continue his legacy. Thus, 
He hasn't stopped. Further, I challenge all of you to do the same and never equate death with stopping. That is, we can do better than just remembering someone. We can do better than just remembering my dad. We can continue to learn from what he's taught us. The elements I've mentioned today. 1. When you find something you love, whether it's work or a hobby, put everything you have into it. 2. Be willing to think creatively to solve problems. 3. Take the time to enjoy the so-called minutiae in life. The alleged trivial details. Make it significant. 4. Be willing to play and be silly. Don't take yourself too seriously. 5. Be brave. Be strong. Be so strong that you're willing to be vulnerable. 6. Be a teacher and be a lifelong student. 7. In everything you say and speak earnestly. 8. Connect with others. Form a community and be there for others. We could all benefit from the help of others. So be unafraid to rely on others for support. I would do anything to have my dad with us here today, in his own words. Which he often told me, it's not what happens to you, but how you handle it. So again, I urge you all to handle this tragedy by staying strong, connecting with community and the support of others, and continuing to learn from my dad. Thank you all for being here. It means the world to me, and I know it means the world to my dad. My mother often had stories like, at your age. We got up at 4am to work on the farm. After the job, we went home to have lunch with your grandfather. Then we walked 10 kilometers to go to school. And when we were back, we used to work in the field in a tractor until it was 6pm to go and cook dinner for your grandfather. And me like yeah but, he didn't work the farm with you in the morning? And she was changing the subject. I learned in Easter that my grandfather was alcoholic. Got drunk every night. Didn't get up in the morning to go to work. Always in fake jobs to lie to the family and go to drink. While the children had to go. In elementary school and manage a farm. Then he was in prison because he touched the neighbor's children. And he got out of prison. He took out a loan of $30,000 in my grandmother's name. And ran away with the money. Then he died a few years later. My grandmother bought herself a used Ford Limited. And no one cried at the funeral. 30 years later. I learned who my grandfather was. So turns out one of my cousins was actually a different aunt child but she couldn't wouldn't raise him so another aunt adopted him to keep him in the family. Only my mother and her siblings knew this until his biological mom was dying of cancer and they decided to reveal it. It was really itty. Especially because he has a biological sister that was little more than a long distant cousin. He was around 24 when this all came out. Last week I discovered that my dad died 2 years ago. And no one bothered to tell me. I'd been looking for him. He was something off a drifter and most likely had Asperger's. I'm his only child. I stumbled across his headstone on findergrave.com while digging through ancestry. His marker was labeled beloved brother. My aunts and uncles are pieces of it. I'm not hard to find. I don't even know how he died. He died alone though. VA paid for his burial. I'm not okay. Edit. Thank you to everyone who's been so kind. I'm still processing the whole thing so I'm not ready to confront my relatives. My dad was a good guy. He had his demons and my mother was one of them. Our estrangement wasn't his fault. I'm my father's daughter. And I say that proudly. I'm a veteran like he was. I'm a writer like he was. And I'm autistic as well. I understand the gaps in contact. He was kind. Smart. Sarcastic and just a good guy. He loved baseball and metal detecting. Find a grave his name is Simon Leslie Wright. Junior. He died the 12th of February. 2019. I was asked for his name so someone could leave virtual flowers.